Hello and welcome back. This is going to be part two of the species summerfowl polychylus phalaenopsis update. We're going to take a real good look at each one, kind of talk about them. I'll let you know how long I've had them, kind of the care I've been giving them, and kind of what I expect from them for the rest of the season. If you have not seen part one, that is perfectly okay because you don't need to see part one to understand part two, unlike most things, right? Um, but I will uh, put a link in the description at the end of the video. I will also put a little, little click tag if you wanna click to that one and go check out the other girls that I have. Doing this, well, I am gonna break the spike. Doing this, I realized I have more of these than I thought I did. Um, I have not counted them all, but I think I have 40, maybe 42 of this particular grouping. The store-bought hybrids, I think, keyword on my sentence is think, I think, I still have more of those than these, but I don't know. You know what, I'll do a count when I'm done and I'll put, I'll separate them on the screen for you. Neil, where do we start? You know what, we're gonna start with this one here. This is my most recent acquisition. So I got this one from La Foresta Orchids out of Puerto Rico. And this is the Phalaenopsis violacea, variation Carula indigo. And there is their information. And if you've not seen the unboxing of this, I'll also link that down below. But when you see this orchid, do not freak out. This is not what they send. I've seen other people unbox videos from them, or unbox orchids from them, and they come in great shape. This was heat damage, just so you know. But here is what she looks like. So for those of you who did see the unboxing, this new leaf here, I ended up cutting it off just because it did not firm back up. It was kind of starting to get mushy, but these two side leaves here, they are kind of firming up a little bit, so she's, she's, she's trying. And we do have some healthy green down in there. So what I did is I did take her out of her little seedling basket plug plastic pot and the same moss that she came in I just used it for this and mixed in some orchiata bark for some aeration because that I watered her the day I got her which was on uh, Friday the was it Friday the 14th Friday the 14th um, and on Sunday she was still wet so I took her out took all the moss off, didn't do much, uh, cut off a couple of dried roots, didn't do much more than that, and then mixed in some Orchiata bark, the medium, which for us is gonna be small, but this is the medium Orchiata bark, but I mixed in some of that and just put her back in here. This pot is slotted and it is from the Orchid Supply Store. So again, if you want to save 12% off on your next order, Use coupon code T-R-I-S-H. Guys, they've got birdhouses. Ken has got some birdhouses, and I've got two on the way. I am I cannot wait to see them. They, they look so cute online. So go check it out. Go get you a birdhouse. They're like $26 a piece. They're hand-painted. Um, they just look so cute. So comparatively, like if you were to buy one in your local store, pretty much the same price. Anywho, and free shipping in the United States, so guess what? You don't even have to pay that. And he gives away a free gift for any order over $35. How great is that? But the expectation for this one is, of course, hopefully she will develop a new leaf, at the very least, continue with how she is. And what I have her sitting is kind of, so I have an east-facing window right in front of me. And I have my table and chairs behind me, and she sits on that table. So she's about, I don't know, about eight feet away from the east-facing window. So she's getting bright light, but I'm not giving her heavy light because I don't want to stress her too much. And they did, I did reach out to them. Um, I sent them a little quick video of what was going on, that kind of thing. And they are gonna refund the orchid for me because unfortunately they don't have any more. And I know that before I even reached out to them because I went online to look for another one. Anyway, 
I am going to have a Violacea in my collection if it kills me. All right, let me move her in over here because she is super, super delicate. And I am, I just need to really take care of her. And I don't know what I do with her tag. There it is. Keep their tags together. And then let's talk about the Sideria japonica. So this is Phalaenopsis japonica. Sideria japonica. I uh, recently, recently, oh my god, guys, my brain is all over the place today. I do apologize, but I purchased her a year ago, July of 2021. Oh, not a year ago. Oh my goodness, two years ago uh, from Brookside Orchids. Look, there's the tag. Oh my goodness, where's time gone? So two years ago from Brookside Orchids, my son who is in the Marines was stationed in Japan. And as you can see, this is a orchid species from Japan. And of course I had to have it. I've always wanted a Japonica, but then once he got there, it was like, I gotta have one now. So in two years, she's not done much, just so you know. In two years, so she has lost two leaves since I've had her. And then she's grown four leaves since I've had her. Now she's been in this particular setup, which is the medium Orchiata bark perlite. And I think there's a little bit of charcoal since January of 2023. Guys, since I put her in here, she has really taken off. Um, these two leaves, this leaf had just started and this leaf is already finished. So she also has lots of roots going down into the pot. I think she likes this setup much better. Previously, I had her in small bark and moss perlite, and I believe she was probably just staying a little too wet. So since moving her to a more quicker drying cycle, she is actually kicked into gear. Now, I probably won't get any blooms off of her for quite some time, but that's okay. The blooms, from what I understand, are very fragrant. And the pictures that I've seen, oh my goodness, they're so cute. Little cream colors with stripes in them, so cute. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about this one here because I keep hitting the spike. And if I break the spike, I'm really not going to be mad simply because. And if I can find pictures of the ones that have bloomed for me, I will post those as well. But this one here was recently in bloom. And let me move, my, move that one right there because, again, I will knock it over. This one was recently in bloom. She's got beautiful, beautiful pink flowers. And as you can see from this spike, it clusters. Just absolutely beautiful. Now this right here says DTPS Lucky Sun. Her name is actually a lot longer. Again, I will post that down on the screen somewhere for you. But she is in a bark and moss mixture. And look at all the roots inside as well as all the roots outside. So this leaf right here, she grew this leaf while she was in spike the last time. She started this leaf, shortly after she started this leaf, this spike came out. And then that spike decided it wanted to branch. And we have another spike here while she finished this leaf and growing roots. This girl right here is an overachiever. I don't mind. I don't mind because I love her blooms. And just like every Phalaenopsis, they last a long time. So if you would like an orchid that is going to bloom for you consistently once she's happy. Now, she just started doing this. I got her in August of 21, and she did rebloom for me in 22. But this year, this is her second flush of blooms. Two spikes this go around very very happy and she's been in this setup since i've gotten her pretty much bark and moss i have repotted her um, in april of last year so she's been in this setup for about a year but she came out of the same bark and moss i do grow her on a shelf underneath the barina light oh and i guess i should tell you the japonica sits in front of the east facing window uh, that was another thing i changed for her because i feel like I had her under the barinas. I think that was just, she was just getting a little too much light from um, her liking. And then since this one's right here, let's just talk about the Phalaenopsis pulchra. Here we go. There. And I got her from Big Leaf Orchids. So I saw this on Fernanda Nassimato's channel a few months ago. She ordered one. 
And then Nina at Ninja's Orchids recently, I think she put hers on a mount, I think. I think it was Nina. Pretty sure it was Nina. And I said, hmm, I think I need one of those in my life. So I went on the hunt. And big leaf orchids, I've ordered them from them before. They always have beautiful, healthy plants. And she came, let me move the tag. So I've had her since June of this year, so a little over a month. She came with this leaf just starting, and as you can see, look how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. And I just noticed, literally while I was running my mouth, let me see if I can move it. We have the beginnings of a little root tip. So she does have roots in a la pot. And again, with this one, what I did is I just took her out of the moss that she came in. It was still rather healthy and smelled fresh, so I just reused it, added some small bark and perlite for some, no, no perlite, just small bark for aeration, and she has not skipped a beat. Now, I don't see a new leaf growing on this leaf quite yet, but there is always hope. And these are two cakeys. Um, they are connected on a stem, so I just set them in there, did not separate them. They each had their own little root system developed, I was not going to mess with that, so I'm excited to see what she does. Now, she sits on this Barina shelf, on that second shelf right there, and she sits almost under the light, because again, from what I've seen, read, heard, they like their light. All right, and she... Now, I think eventually I am going to have to do something else besides pot her or find a different pot from what I've researched. They are ramblers and cakey makers so they like to be mammoths and let's talk about this one before i forget about it so this is the phalaenopsis fimbrata it is a species from java sumatra and sarawak and i got her in september of 2022 from brookside orchids and let's just take her out now she sits on the wall right behind me and she gets residual light from a grow light that's in the corner but she's not she doesn't have it on her now when she came to me now remember this is September of 2022 it is July of 2023 I just want y'all to do the math for a minute this spike she came with this spike it's not doing nothing it acts like it's going to develop a bud and then it doesn't do anything Oh, but wait, there's more because we also have another spike that she came with in September. Again, will green up like she's going to bloom, nada. She grew this leaf, which she was growing when she came. It did get a little bit of damage. Oh, that damage right there, I did that. And that's it. That's all she's done. Well, she's growing roots, I guess. I guess she's doing something. She's growing roots. But she is, sits in moss and perlite. And that is all I can say about this lady right here. That is all I can say. Now, I do keep these pebbles down here more for counterbalance as well as in the event there is residual water flow from when I water. We'll allow that to drain off. And put that there. And I am going to get a sip of coffee. So if you have something to drink, go ahead and get you something. And just for the record, I am not sponsored by Starbucks. I just like these cups. I have two Starbucks cups that I like to use because of the weight. And more importantly, look at the handles on these things. Let me cover that up. But look at the handle on those. I love the handle because I can really get a good grip. This was one of the ones I used after my hand surgery when it said, don't pick up anything heavier than a cup of coffee. Gotcha. All right, next we're going to chat about this lady here. So this one I purchased from Big Leaf Orchids as well back in June because I needed something else to travel with Pulchra. I mean, she couldn't travel alone, right? So this is the Phalaenopsis Xing Feng Savory Orange which is a cross between Taing Shen, I think that's Dragonfly, I can't read that part, and Cho Shiyang Orange. 
there you go. I will put that out on the bottom there so it's a little easier to kind of see what that is. But again, big leaf orchids, beautiful, wonderful plants. She came in spike and she has bloomed for me since she came and I am loving the way that the spray is going. Look at those. This is kind of how she looks when she first opens. She's nice, bright, very strong colors. And then as the days pass, it usually takes about three or four days. And then she kind of fades to this here. Let me see if I can separate that without breaking it there. Kind of separates to a little more dullness in the center, but that lip stays prominent. Again, she came with all of these leaves. Is that not just beautiful? This is the goal, guys. This is our goal to get our leaves to grow nice and even and straight across. Now, is she gonna stay like this? Probably not. She also sits in front of the east facing window. She has a lovely leaf starting as well as, if you look really closely, let's see, where is it? Right, right in there. If you look really closely, we have us another little spike developing. She too came with a beautiful root system. Let's see, right here, you can kind of see them in there. And again, I just took the moss that she came in, reused it with small orchiata bark or medium orchiata bark. It looks small, but it's the medium orchiata bark. She sits in this decorative pot with rocks on the bottom to create a little bit of humidity as well as to drain off any water away from her so she is not sitting in water. And because I haven't had her that long, I don't have that much to say about her. Put you over there. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about big lady. Let's talk about this big juicy girl. Now, this is the Phalaenopsis Mewtwo King Bellina. So she is a cross between LD's Bear King and LD Bellina Eagle. Again, she is a Brookside Orchids purchase. I purchased her in May of 2022. 22? Yes, 22. I had to make sure. 2022. Um, so a little over a year ago. And since I've had her, she grew this juicy leaf last year. Now, she had um, come with this leaf back here growing. This one back here. It was almost completely done when she was done. A look at this beautiful one and then this one she has been growing since towards the end of the season last year so for those of you who are not aware when your big fat ladies like this first start growing the leaf is going to look kind of narrow and you're going to get concerned that it's not going to fill out but what she, what this one does and what I've noticed the majority of mine do is they'll grow kind of a flat leaf I have an example later but they kind of grow a little more normal, like our regular fowls, like this fowl here, kind of grow like that. But then once they get to the length that they're going to go, they will start then spreading and fattening out because that's what this one has done with all three of her leaves. But look at the roots. Look at all these beautiful roots. I just, this is one of those orchids, guys, I literally go and look at her every day. Just look like big, I don't know, apples. Look at that. That's my hand. Look at that. That leaf is as big as my hand. Can you imagine? Just imagine how big this girl's going to get. Has she bloomed for me yet? Nope. Am I waiting for her to bloom? Yup. But then, you know, that's really the goal, isn't it? To see the blooms. Now, of course... We want a healthy orchid before we get the blooms, but oh my goodness. So she is in the medium orchiata bark and perlite, and that is it. There is no moss, nada in here. She sits again in a decorative pot with some pebbles at the bottom on a stool right behind, well, behind the table and in front of the east facing window. And she does have a Barina grow light not over her, but she gets lighting. Ooh, don't break that. Lighting from that. Okay. And let's just get this one out of the way. This one is the, and I'm going to say it wrong. Just bear with me. Phalaenopsis Lam Lamligera Wilson. 
uh, species from India, Maynard, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, the Nicobar Isles, Malaysia, Borno, Java, Sumatra, Philippines. So found in quite a few places. Purchased from Brookside Orchids in September of 2022, so not quite a year ago. She did come with the spike, and since then, that spike has grown whoop, where it's starting to bend from about right there on. Let's see if I can, let me set her down. So she's extended about that far, and sometimes she'll put off two blooms at a time sometimes she'll only put off one so in this case we only have the one bloom look at it though look at the delicateness of this bloom look at that is she not just absolutely cute as a button i don't smell anything from her i don't think she's supposed to be fragrant if she is i'm not smelling it could be she's just not getting enough white but also since coming into my collection, she has finished off this leaf, which she was growing. She's grown this leaf and is working on another leaf as well as roots. She too is in all moss and perlite, sits on the wall, right, the small grow shelf, she sits right above that on the wall. And let's squeeze her in here. There we go. What's next? Ah, let's talk about Hooker Rihanna here. So this, I cannot, uh, I think I got this one from Brookside. Yes, I did get this one from Brookside. It's not one of their regular labels. That's why it kind of threw me off. So this one I got in September of 2022. Actually, all of the ones that I got in September of 2022 um, rode along for this one because this is the one that I placed the order for. This is a replacement of another Hooker Rihanna that I received, but this used to be called the Kinga Diem Deliciosum variation Hooker Rihanna. It has now been reclassified as a Phalaenopsis. I love this tag because it does have the original Kingianum name on it. So, this one hangs on a wall behind me. Um, again, gets east facing light on her from this window. She has this beautiful root growing out. She is in all moss and perlite. And she did spike earlier this year. And then we have some root tips trying to climb out. She's grown this, well, she finished this leaf, grew this leaf, and is now working on that little baby leaf in there. Again, little, and these are self-watering pots. I just don't use them as self-watering pots. I got them so I could hang them on the wall. That's the only reason that I, I have those. And then while we're talking about hanging on the wall, this is the Phalaenopsis Equestris cross back to self. This one I got from Carter and Holmes and it was back in October of 22. There is that. Oh, can you, yep, there we go. Now, this is also a, a species orchid. And if I can get her on a she, I initially put her in a mesh pot and should have probably potted her directly into here, which I may end up doing here before she gets too established with the roots in here. Because you can see she's starting to push her roots out of this mesh basket, which you can get these at the orchid supply store too. Just, you know, throw that out there. She has grown one leaf since she's been with me. That's it, just a one leaf. I guess I can tell you when, oh, I did tell you, October 22, duh. So I've only had her for a few months and typical to form being a species, she is a slower grower, but she is also known to be another baby maker. So she is also a cakey machine. From what I've read, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm excited to watch her and the pulchra decide who's going to be the better parent. Another sip of coffee. And you know what, guys, while I'm thinking about it, 
I think I am going to go ahead and pot her into this inner pot like I have the other ones because I'm afraid pulling her in and out is going to mess things up. So give me just a second. I need to put you on pause. I'll be right back. 